My name is Angela Cook. I am the operations manager for the Delaware SPCI, which is the oldest animal welfare agency for the state of Delaware. We are here at our Newark location. Strudel is a very sweet dog. She's an integral part of our spay neuter program. She is kind of our four-legged recovery assistant slash nurse. She often sits with the animals on our recovery mats, keeping them warm and just kind of, you know, being there for them. And I, our staff, as well as myself, feel it's kind of the result of what she's gone through herself um, as a surgical, you know, patient. We feel that there's a lot of value to have her basically as our mascot at this point for our spay neuter program. Strudel came into our system the result of being a stray, so unfortunately we did not have a lot of information. She was found on one of the highways in Sussex County. And she was diagnosed with a heart murmur by our staff veterinarian at the time, and also that she had multiple mammary tumors. As a result of that and with our meeting with the University of Pennsylvania in April 2010, we decided that we would re take it upon ourselves basically to refer her and see if she would be accepted into the mammary tumor program for evaluation. We made an appointment in January. I took her to see Dr. Gaeta, and they accepted her that day, and she had surgery the next day, and we've been part of the program ever since. My name is Rachel Gaeta. I'm the first year medical oncology resident at the University of Pennsylvania. It's the Penn Vet Shelter Canine Mammary Tumor Program. It's a program that was established by Dr. Serenmo, the head of oncology here, and basically our goal is to identify dogs in shelters that have mammary cancer. Mostly, you know, we have two goals, helping the dogs and trying to get them a better chance at being adopted out um, and having a better chance at a good life, and also um, learning more about breast cancer in dogs, and you know, we hope that that will also give us more information about breast cancer in people as well. The PenVet Canine Memory Tumor Shelter Program uh, was started about two years ago. The likelihood of these dogs actually getting out of the shelters and finding new owners are relatively low because when you go to the shelter to adopt a dog, you may not necessarily look for an old dog with multiple mammary gland tumors that would cost a lot to treat. And, you know, so, so they are actually the underdog. They are the most vulnerable dogs in the shelter population. So with my interest in mammary gland tumors, I thought these dogs actually would be a unique resource for my research and at the same time I can help the most needy of the needy dogs. What we found was pretty typical for a lot of the dogs that are coming in through the study. She had several mammary masses involving multiple different mammary glands. Um, I think she had about 11 masses that we identified of varying sizes and they involved almost every mammary gland and dogs have 10 so you know it makes sense that uh, they were distributed throughout. We know that hormones are important for the development of mammary cancer in dogs and they're also important you know in mammary cancer in people as well and in dogs when they're spayed at a, a very early age before they have their first estrus that's the best time you know in terms of reducing their risk for later development of mammary cancer. For Strudel she was actually spayed as an adult dog much later in life and you know that means that she still will be at risk for developing future tumors in other mammary glands that are remaining. In mammary gland tumors the standard of care is surgical resection and that is the most important part of the treatment. And most of the dogs with mammary gland tumors are gonna be candidate for, for surgical resection. The goal of the surgery is clearly to remove all of the primary tumors. My name is uh, Dr. Mike Schlicksup and I'm a third year surgery resident at the University of Pennsylvania here at the Matthew J. Ryan Small Animal Hospital. Yeah, she had uh, almost a bilateral radical mastectomy performed, and so she had two mammae that were left on the cranial aspect on one side. Otherwise, the rest of the mammae were all removed uh, at the same time. In Strudel's case, and in any case where we think there's a lot of tension on the incision and, and a large amount of dead space, which we see with the mammary cases, we put a negative pressure wound device over the top of it immediately at the time of surgery over the closed incision. Uh, to try and help speed healing and decrease complications. She recovered great from surgery, went back over to our soft tissue ward, uh, stayed here in the hospital for about three days post-op, kept the, the VAC device on for those full three days, and then we 
took the device off, looked at the incision. The incision had healed very well. She was as active as ever. And from that point was cleared to kind of go back to her normal, normal active lifestyle. The research component of this program is to try to understand a little bit more what happens when tumors transform from being benign to malignant. What is unique about the dog is that the dogs have multiple glands and they develop multiple tumors. And what we see clinically is that we can almost see a snapshot of the entire progression from benign to malignant as we study the different tumors within the same dog. And that gives us a unique opportunity to understand breast cancer carcinogenesis and pinpoint what goes wrong. Why does some of these tumors transform and become malignant and while others don't? We are very fortunate that we are close to one of the best veterinary hospitals in the entire country. You know, without that type of program, Strudel may not have been able to obviously receive the services and outstanding care that she's been able to receive to this point and will continue to receive as part of that program. At this time, we have operated on 35 dogs. And here is the group of dogs that we have treated. The idea is, is that we're trying to find these guys a home and the benefit is you know, they come in and they have a problem that maybe then owners don't want to take home a dog that they know has a mammary tumor or a mass and this solves that problem and then they go on to find you know, good homes after that. You know, that makes us feel good and it makes them feel good and it helps the dogs. And it's also beneficial to us because we hope that we'll be learning more about development of breast cancer in dogs and then hopefully can help our future patients. It's the feel-good factor about it, you know, helping dogs uh, that are the most needy. And it's opened up a totally new world for me because it put me in touch with shelters, rescue organization, and all these people who are willing to do so much for these dogs. It's, it's been wonderful.